Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, yesterday I ran a quick poll uh, what people would like to see me paint next. And out of four miniatures, with 1,500 votes cast, Tarkin here won with 38% of the vote by himself. Quite surprising me, if I'm perfectly honest, I was getting ready to paint a guardsman. <laughs> but I'm glad that he did, because this was a lot of fun to paint. Now, this fella has come from Darkfire Designs. I will make sure there's a link down there that you can go grab the STLs. Uh, they also have licensed printers around the world, so don't feel as though you're going to miss out if you don't have a 3D printer. As well, all of the paints for this one will be in the description below. Same as always, so let's get started. So as always, once your miniature is cleaned up and assembled, popped on as base, it's time to prime them. Now I've used here grey from Vallejo, uh, out of the rattle can. Any light grey will work. Uh, in particular, ash grey from the Army Painter, or grey sear from Citadel, a light grey. Uh, because most of the colours we're going to be painting are going to be quite light, with the exception of his uniform, uh, the uniform itself is going to be fairly simple. So putting it over a light grey is not going to matter too much. But for his skin and things, it will make life much easier. Now we are going to start with this skin, and we want to start fairly light. Uh, Peter Cushing, he was not a bronzed Adonis by the longest stretch, so we're going to start with Cadian Flesh Tone. As you see, we're going to get a little bit of the uh, primer still showing through, but don't worry. Once this is dried, we can come back and give it a second coat, make sure that's nice and solid. Now don't do what I always do and forget his hands, just because he's got that posture. Um, <laughs> I tend to forget the important bit behind him. Even though he's most impressive from the front, don't forget his hands. Now once that's dried, what I've got here is a little bit of white scar. And we're actually going to lay down the base for his eyes now. So with a nice fine tip on my brush, let's get in here. Because it does not matter now if I splurge over the rest of his face. So I'm just splatting in, essentially, a horizontal white line. And uh, I'm going to do that on the other side, which will be a little easier off camera without his nose in the way. Now trying to nail down the color of Peter Cushing's eyes has actually been quite a challenge. They appear to be very light blue, but in most of the Star Wars shots I've found they look almost light gray. So what I've got here, this is blue-gray pale from Vallejo. Uh, but you could use, I don't know, Fenrisian gray or something similar. Anything you fancied really. What I'm going to do is just blip in that horizontal line to give him a bit of definition in his eyes. And at the moment, it still looks like we're painting clown makeup. <laughs> that never stops being funny when I see it. Uh, we're going to go back now to our Cadian flesh tone and just paint around the eyes to tidy them up and get rid of basically that funky look that he's got going there. So this will be much easier off camera, but you can see the principle of what's going on. Now at the moment, that's going to appear still quite wide-eyed and staring, but that is going to work just fine once we've shaded him. And yeah, it invokes a little bit more life, I think, by actually painting his eyes. I tend not to for most of my miniatures, but your characters like this, it's definitely worth it. Now we're going to move on to his uniform. I've got a slightly larger brush here, and this is German uniform field grey. World War II. It's almost like George Lucas was trying to tell us something about the Empire with how they were dressed. Crazy. Anyhow, this, uh, this goes on nice and quick. Uh, Field Grey is a wonderfully easy color to apply. If you do get any of the primer showing through, just let it dry. Give it a second coat later. There, now that looks familiar. We're going to carry on with the German themed paints here, and what I have is German Grey, another Vallejo color. This is a very dark, just off black, but it has a tiny hint of blue to it, so it makes a wonderful leather color. Um, I'd suggest something like, what is it, Corvus Black from Citadel will be quite similar. Um, but the reason why I'm using German Grey here is that it just covers in one go. So whatever you can find, an off black here will work quite well. Try not to go to a true black, because we want to be able to shade this and have a little bit of fun with the appearance. Now grab yourself a light metal color, uh, something silver. I'm using here plate mail metal from the Army Painter. 
and we're going to go over, I'll let you guess, all the metal bits. Now for the little squares on his rank slide, uh, don't worry too much about what color you're using, just use something really light. Uh, so I'm using Moon Dust, Electric Blue, and what is it, Mars Red from the Army Painter. And the reason why I haven't done the tidy up on the silver yet, or rather on his uniform, is because if I make a mess here, which I'm almost certainly going to, I can tidy up the silver, and then tidy up his uniform. Now the last of the base coats to apply is going to be for his hair, and any light-ish grey will do fine. I have Ash Grey from the Army Painter. Uh, this one I'm using because it's not a pure grey, there is a very slight brownish tint to it. Um, it doesn't matter all that much what you decide to use, just cover over all his hair with your grey. Now it comes time to shade him. What I've got here, first of all, this is a mix of two parts speed paint medium with one part the new strong skin shade from the Army Painter. Now I'm using this because it's not very red, and uh, Peter Cushing's skin tone, he wasn't, he didn't look very warm in Star Wars, shall we say. So what I'm going to do with this nice thin mix is just apply it over the face, guiding it where I want to be. Now on his eyes in particular, you'll notice that that will cover very quickly. So once you've put this on all of his face, you can swap down quickly to a smaller brush and just guide some of that shade out of his eye sockets. You don't want to take all of it out, but just enough that you don't completely lose the eyes that you have painted in there. Now once that's dried, you'll see we've got some wonderful definition in the face, and it is quite a natural looking skin tone. What we're going to do now is the same thing again, but with strong tone over the rest of the miniature. So this is the same mix of two parts medium to one part strong tone, and uh, you can just apply this over the miniature. Now the reason why I've thinned it out is I don't want it to affect the color of his uniform all that much. I really just want this to give me some shading in those recesses. And so I'm going to slow down as I approach his hands. But otherwise, this is just like shading any other miniature. So over everything, and then we'll give that some time to dry, probably about half an hour. And once that's dried, isn't that magic? <laughs> you know, you could just pop his base on him and call him done here. That nice subtle shading really does the job, but I do want to take it a little bit further. What I'm going to start with is by highlighting his uniform, and here I've mixed up roughly equal parts of field grey and stone grey from the Army Painter. Maybe a little bit more field grey. Now, thin it down just a touch more than you normally would so that it flows nice and smoothly. And I'm just going to catch a few of the edges of his tunic, his trousers and what have you. Now, if you thin this down even further, you can go as far as using it as a... Uh, almost a glaze highlight. Uh, I'm not going to do it because it's a little bit finicky, um, and I want to try and keep this simple. So instead, we're just going to have some nice crisp edges at the outer points and folds in his uniform. Now that's already going to look the business, but if you do want to take it a little bit further, all it takes is a tiny bit extra of that stone gray into your highlight mix, and you can do just some of the extreme edges a little bit lighter. And if you happen to have thinned your paint down enough, then when you make any mistakes like that in the recesses, you can quickly dap in there with a bit of water and scoop them out. <laughs> now we're going to move on and we're going to highlight the face. Now something that just surprised me is I discovered I hadn't used Cadian Flesh Tone for his face at all. What I had done was started with Cadian Flesh Tone, just having grabbed the wrong pot. Uh, but yeah, this is what I wanted, so happy accident. What we're going to do now is to go over most of the face again with that Cadian Flesh Tone. Uh, at this point, we just want to leave some of that shaded spookiness in the recesses. So particularly on his cheekbones, you know, leave those as gaunt as you can. But most of his face we are going to now cover over again with Cadian Flesh Tone. With Kislev Flesh, goodness me! Now that we've got the shape of his face sketched in, we can start adding some real highlights. Now, pretty much everything you've seen so far has been done with a medium layer brush. 
because it doesn't matter so much ordinarily the size of the brush as the tip the point will keep. Uh, in this case though, I am going down to a smaller brush. And what I have here, this is a small layer brush. So what we're going to do now, as I very carefully whisper to the miniature so I don't spook it off, is start picking areas of the face that we want to accentuate and make look more three-dimensional. So his brows, his forehead. Now we want to leave some of that Kislev flesh from earlier, and we're really picking the parts that we want to stand out. So along those ice-cold, jagged cheekbones, little line of that. And you'll see here that I've got next to nothing on my brush as I'm doing this. This is the the easiest bit of advice I can ever give you when it comes to highlighting is have less paint on your brush because the more that you have, the more quickly you are going to lose control of it as it hits a miniature and then it wants to flow. So in this case, less paint for once is more control. Now we're starting to get the expression in his face. The last thing that we're going to do is to really make some of those details sing. And for this, I'm going all the way up to Pallid Witch Flesh. This one is just off of white. And this is where we're going to really put the finishing touches on some of those bits. So really here, just his brow, his cheekbones and his nose to make those look properly jagged. Now there is our awful man. But I do want to keep going. So what I've done, I have mixed up roughly half and half. This is Karaberg Crimson with a little bit of Lamian Medium. What I'm going to do is get some of this onto my brush. And, oh, goodness me, I need a point on my brush for this. There we go. I'm going to paint this just up under his eyes. Uh, because we see in the remastered versions that he had quite prominent little pink marks under his eyes. His lower eyelids were fairly... And then to add just a little bit of warmth to it, what I've got is again half and half. This is medium and Reichland flesh shade. And I'm going to apply this over his bottom lip. <laughs> there he is. What I'm going to do next is his hair. For this, I'm going to do just some thin stripes of silver gray. This is a Vallejo color, but any off white will do the job. Um, and to tell you the truth, I'm going to do most of this off camera here because I really just want to blast through now. I've uh, done the hard part, as it were. Now, the last thing that I should probably really do would be to highlight his boots and his belt, but I'm not going to. Um, I don't think it would add a huge amount to the miniature to really do it at this stage. But if you wanted to, um, you have seen me do black leather before. Something with a touch of blue in it, like Thunderhawk Blue or Dark Reaper. Uh, even that blue-gray that we used earlier for the eyes, mix it in with some of your German gray and you can use it as a highlight quite happily. But what I am going to do... Ah, oh, I'm dead chuffed with that. I'm going to go ahead, uh, put a varnish over him, and let's get a look at what it looks like when he is all finished. And so there at last, Grand Moff Tarkin is complete. Now, hopefully something there was interesting. I know that I don't ordinarily do a lot of uh, characters on the channel like this, but if you are painting a face or something that you really want to spend a bit of time on, um, or you've got a German officer, maybe, that you've got designs on, then there might be one or two little tips in here that you can take away and apply to something that you like. Or you might want to paint a Tarkin. Why not? He's awesome. So again, Darkfire Designs, I will pop a link in the description to make sure that you can go find these because they are just brilliant. And like I said earlier, the likeness on them is just stunning. It was a real joy to paint. So as well, thank you very much to Exit 23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of my wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paint and glue, and importantly this time, resin. <laughs> Including my gorgeous producers who are showing up on screen now, Thank you so much, folks. Without your support, this would just not happen. Now, any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and you may fire when ready.